Iran will continue to pursue the dollarization to avert impact from sanctions, according to its central bank deputy governor, Mohsen Karimi, in a recent interview. Sara Santos reports. The Asian Clearing Union, or ACU, a Tehran-based regional multilateral trade clearing institution consisting of nine member countries, announced in May that it would launch an alternative to the heavily U.S.-influenced Society for Worldwide Interbank Financial Telecommunication, or SWIFT system. Mozen Karimi, deputy governor of Iran's central bank and also the vice president of ACU, noted that regional countries saw the need of an accelerated de-dollarization push in recent years. استفاده حد اکثری از پول های ملی و به بیان دیگر کاهش وابستگی و نیاز به ارزهای بین المللی تأسیس شده و هدف اصلی اون کاهش آسیب هایی است که از قبل ارزهای بین المللی ممکنه متوجه اقتصاد های کشور های عضو بشه کشور های منطقه بشه که خب اخیرا به دلیل محدودیت هایی که به وجود اومده در خصوص ارزهایی مثل دلار و یورو خب ترغیب و انگیزه کشورها برای احیاء این سازمان بیشتر شد. As not all countries have access to the SWIFT system, ACU members agreed to customize a dedicated banking system to cover all currency clearing transaction needs between member states according to Karimi. در تلاش هستش که از ظرفیت این اتحادیه برای کاهش وابستگی به دلار در تعاملات دو جانبه داشته باشه ما به این عنوان میگیم دیدالریزیشن دلار زدایی Meanwhile the deputy governor noted that many countries are motivated in pursuing de-dollarization and avert US sanctions given that the United States has long been abusing sanctions pursuing unilateralism and hegemonic policies which have brought many harms and negative effects to the international community طبق ادعای خود امریکایی ها الان دلار ابزاری برای تحریمگری و برای فشار آوردن به کشورهای دیگه قلم داد میشه و اظهارات سریح مقامات امریکایی این هستش لکن کشورها روابط اقتصادی خودشون رو میخوان مستقل از یک کشور سالس که میخواد مزاحمتی در روابط اقتصادی ایجاد بکنه شکل بدن بنابراین انگیزه کشورها برای کاهش وابستگی به دلار و یورو و ابزارهای تحریم قابل تحریم بیشتر شده و بنابراین کشورها تمایل دارن که نقش پولهای ملی خودشون رو افزایش بده. This is Sarah Santos reporting as a news. Over a month has passed since the heavy rain and floods reached across Afghanistan, leaving dozens dead including children. And in the aftermath, people are struggling to look for food, clean water and shelter. Loren Santos reports. Floods that raged across Afghanistan reportedly claimed dozens of deaths, including 42 children. The flash flood was caused by heavy seasonal rain in more than eight provinces in Afghanistan. Moreover, seven of Afghanistan's eight provinces have either been partially or completely damaged, and over 606 residential houses, as well as hundreds of acres of agricultural lands. The province of Wardak in central Afghanistan had suffered the most from the heavy rainstorms and flooding over the past days. The Dara Wazarat, Timuno, the Milidifa Wazarat, the Tulgatu Wazarat, Remyashte, the Ulat Mokamuno, Anur of Matiban Sertuno, and Mususara Pahamkare, the Lumrane Satunuke, Selab Zapolo Simuta Zanda Savale, Azian Munota, the Rasidene, the Jurane, or Palatene Amalat, Rumaniki Damat, or Brana Biranet, the Umras to Veshe Mutiat Kare. The Taliban officials said that in the past four months, natural disasters in Afghanistan have claimed 214 lives, left 320 people injured, killed 3,800 head of cattle, and damaged or destroyed 3,115 houses. And while relief aid is being provided, there is still a huge need for more. Meanwhile, in the Argandi district of Kabul, the flood water severely affected more than 20 industrial factories, with losses amounting to at least 1 million U.S. dollars. سیلاب کاملاً آسیب خیلی زیاد برای ما رساندند. تمام ماشین‌هایت از ما از بین رفتند. ما از نهادهای به ملی و بین المللی خانی کمک کردیم. بیست و سه نفر از دست دادم، دو نفر از همسایه ما را دست دادم، بیست و پنج نفر.
Some Afghans have called for a permanent solution to help villagers stay safe during the monsoon that lead to flash floods that occur almost every year in Takana. Meanwhile, the United Nations, along with other international organizations and de facto government ministries, rushed to the affected areas to provide food, shelter and first aid. Taliban authorities continue to urge international agencies to speed up humanitarian assistance for the victims. Reporting for Newsline World, this has been Loren Santos, SMNI News. Despite rare opposition to an edict, the Taliban announced Tuesday that all beauty salons in Afghanistan must now close as a one-month deadline ends. Sigrid Castaneda has the news. Thousands of beauty salons across Afghanistan have been permanently closed from Tuesday following an order by the Taliban authorities. The abrupt move is expected to cut off one of the few revenue streams available to women, as well as a cherished space for socializing. It is the latest in a series of policies that restrict Afghan women's legal rights. A makeup artist in Afghanistan expresses concern on how she will manage to feed her family. No education, no university, and the schools were shut down. Everything is banned, and I'm confused over where I can go and where I can work. Where can I find a legitimate income to feed my family? The official reasoning for the order was that extravagant sums being spent on makeovers have caused hardship for poor families, and that some salon treatment are un-Islamic, according to the country's Ministry for the Promotion of Virtue and Prevention of Vice. Since seizing power in August 2021, the Taliban has barred girls and women from high schools and universities, as well as from parks, fun fairs, and gyms, and has ordered them to cover up in public. This is Sigrid Castaneda reporting as MNI News.